I hate filler words. Filler words are the little vocal pauses and useless sayings that we put into our speech to try to keep the audience's attention or maybe prevent them from interrupting. Honestly, I don't really know why we use them, but it's starting to drive me nuts. It's cute when you do it, don't worry. But when I do it, and then I have to edit myself talking on YouTube, it starts to drive me crazy. I found myself wanting a device that would give me a nice little electric shock whenever I use one of these filler words. I'm not a hardware engineer, I'm a software engineer, so I built myself the next best thing. Are you ready? Let's uh, circle back to that tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, an air horn. Now, whenever I use one of these little filler words, I know that there's this air horn looming and that moments later, it's going to wreck my audio, cause me to re-record a section, and basically just make me grumpy. The nice thing about this is that it's making me be more aware of what I'm saying as I'm saying it. So how do we build this? You don't need to build your own LLM and train it. You can just use some off the shelf tools and put them together like Lego. So come along and let's all be a little more well-spoken together. We'll start with a new TypeScript project. Looking at our package.json, all we have set up is TypeScript and our node types. We edit index.ts and we're ready to go. First, let's document what we want to do here. We want to one, constantly record, two, recognize speech from recordings, three, check recognized speech for filler words, and then four, play air horn if filler words detected. I think that's the gist of our program. So we'll have a while true, and then we will have record. We'll just call our function here. We'll just mock this all out in pseudocode. And then we will have recognize. We'll say something like const text is going to be recognized. Then if text dot match our Regex, give it a better name later, then we'll do play air horn. So this is very grumpy because none of these things exist. So we can start implementing them. We want record to be blocking. It should always be happening. And we're going to record in chunks rather than just creating one massive file. So at the beginning of every loop, we want to start recording. The text, however, the recognition, I think, should be in the background. So we'll make this a promise that yields some text. And then we'll deal with that. Okay. So how are we going to record and how are we going to do that in chunks? We'll open a new tmux tab and we're going to look at the rec command. Rec is part of the Sox audio library toolkit and is used for recording audio from your microphone to disk. We're going to give it a path of temp out.aiff, and then we're going to use the silence effect to tell it how to start and end recording. So we're going to start recording when there's one period of silence that lasts at least 0.1 seconds and is at 1% volume. We will end our recording when there are two frames of silence at 1.0 seconds at 1% volume. So this way we're not recording until there's at least 1% volume, and we don't stop recording until we've fallen below 1% for two seconds. So let's try this out. Hello, and how are you today? Let's play that back. Hello, and how are you today? Perfect. So we're able to record in chunks. So in our while loop, we're effectively just going to do this. And to do that, we will use spawn sync, because we want this to be synchronous. We'll give it the record command rec. We're going to give it a file name, but we actually want this to change every time. Since we're going to be parsing these asynchronously, we don't want to clobber our existing file while it's still being processed. So we'll call this file name. Now we just need to quote our arguments here. So we'll do that. And 
these arguments need to be in square braces, so we'll fix that as well. And then we need to import spawn sync from child process. Now we're ready to define our file name. So file name is going to be const file name equals tmp filler i dot aiff. And then we need to make i an incrementing number. So we'll say let i equals zero, and then we'll increment it at the beginning of record. And then I think we're in a good spot as far as record goes. Let's just comment this out. We'll also add in a log. So console.log, we'll say recording to file name. Great. And let's just uh, give this a test. Over here, I'll do bun index.ts. You can use whatever TypeScript runner you want. And if I hit enter, we'll see a recording to temp filler1.aiff. After some silence, we start recording the next. And then we start recording the next after even more silence. Perfect. So now we'll keep the console.log and we'll start working on this bit. Let's start by implementing recognize. Const recognize is going to be a function that will give us a promise of a string. That string is going to be the recognized content. We'll fill this in momentarily. We should go ahead and do our regex as well. We'll call this filler regex. And then back up here, we'll just specify that. So filler regex is going to be a word boundary followed by um or a, uh, then another word boundary. Perfect. Now we can also define play air horn. And we'll say that that's just going to uh, throw new error to do. All right, so now we're down to just one error, and that's because recognize is not implemented yet. So how do we detect filler words in speech? This is trickier than it sounds because all the speech recognition software out there is designed to intentionally remove these words. We'll use Whisper. Whisper is from OpenAI, but it runs completely offline on your computer and will cost you nothing. You can find instructions in the description for installing Whisper. Let's try Whisper out. We'll run Whisper without any arguments on our first file recorded here. See that it takes a moment. It prints out some warnings. It detects the language. And here you go. It says, I'll see you recording to tempfiller1.aiff. So this is the, the content that we recorded before, and it does a pretty good job. We'll want to clean up this output, though. So we'll start by doing fp16 is false. This will help us get rid of the warning. We have to actually use capital F in false because this is a Python program that's parsing the arguments as if they were Python. That makes it a little cleaner. We still need to deal with the language detection. So I'm always going to be speaking English, so I can make this a little faster by not having it do the language detection. We can also specify a model of tiny.en to get the small English model, which is also faster much better. We still ended up with more or less the same content, but it is happening more quickly. Let's try to record something that has filler words in it. So we'll do rec with the out.aiff. Let's um, circle back to that tomorrow. And now let's run this against that file. Hmm. We didn't get our filler word there. That's unfortunate. And the nice thing about Whisper, though, is that you can give it a prompt. So we're going to specify initial prompt is do not remove filler words like um and uh. Let's see if this does any better. Perfect. Let's um circle back to that tomorrow. Do you uh, have any um, apples today? Okay, so we lost the uh, but we did get the um. It's possible that we get different results on different runs, but in this case, we don't. Do you uh, have any um, apples today? 
The nice thing is that we did get one of the filler words. Let's try this one more time. Do you uh, have any apples today? Okay, so it seems like it can detect one filler word at least per sentence. If it doesn't get multiples, that's okay for our purpose. So once again, we'll grab this entire prompt and we'll move it over here. This time we'll use spawn instead of spawn sync. Again, we want the recording to happen in a blocking way, but we want the processing to happen in the background. If both the recording and the processing were blocking, then we would be missing things that the user is saying while we're doing our processing before we can listen again. So we'll say const child process is going to be spawn and then we will give it the command whisper. Then we will give it all of our arguments, except the initial whisper. This, hmm, we actually want to use a file name here, so we'll take that as an argument, file name, and then we'll quote these. Okay, that needs to be all single quoted. That looks good. So we'll import spawn, also from child process, and we're going to take the file name as a string. So we'll just call this file name string. All right, to be able to get the file name, we need to get that from record. So we'll just say const file name is going to be record, and then we'll pass that in over here. And then now we need to hop back up to record and make it return a string. Okay, great. So now we need to deal with this child process. We're going to receive the standard out of the child process. We will do let buffer equal a new string. Then we'll say child process dot standard out dot on data and we'll get a chunk of data here. In here, we'll say buffer plus equals chunk. So that'll append the chunk of data to our string. And then we can do child process dot on close. We will get some sort of code or something here that we don't care about. But what we do care about is that we can act upon our buffer. Our buffer will be complete at this point. So I think what we will do is to resolve our promise. So let's do a little cleanup here. Mark this as async. We'll let this be return new promise. It's going to give us a resolver. And we will let this guy do a resolve on buffer. And I think that might just work. Seems reasonable enough. Let's do a console.log on the text here. We'll make two small improvements to the recognize function. By default, Whisper is going to output captions as VTT, JSON, SRT, etc. files. So we're going to specify that we only want the TXT file. I wish we could specify that we only cared about standard out, but Whisper doesn't have such an argument. And then we'll also specify the output directory of where we want these files to be output. This will put it in the temp folder where we're putting all our other stuff so it will get cleaned up when we do a reboot. It'll also get cleaned up if we restart our process by overriding the existing files since our index will always start at zero. We could add in stuff here to clean it up as we go, but I'll leave that as an exercise to the reader. Let's test this out. Hello, and how are you today? Now we wait to see what it processes. Great, so it processed. Wonderful. Now, I wonder if we keep talking. Okay, it seems to be getting everything so far. So I think our silence parameters are good. Let's try to trigger our air horn. Let us circle back to that uh, Tuesday. 
perfect. So we threw because we had an uh right here. Excellent. Cancel out and we're ready to implement our air horn. So here all we're going to want to do is hop into our play air horn and we will spawn the play command, which also comes with socks, and we'll give it an argument of the path to our air horn. Now, yours will vary, and I encourage you to download your own air horn noise or something equally annoying. Mine is users ship downloads airhorn.wav. And I think that will just do it. Let's give this a try. Let's uh, circle back to that tomorrow. Great. If I say things without the filler words, then we should be fine. But if we include filler words like um, then it will trigger. Perfect. So we can actually see that we did lose a little bit here. This should be great instead of rate. Right. And then we lost something here in the ether. So our silence parameters may actually need a little bit of tweaking after all. But the goal here is not to have 100% accuracy. The goal is to constantly be improving ourselves, And as long as we are constantly being annoyed by this air horn, that should happen. Whisper works great and is easy to install. But if we want to go faster, we can use whisper.cpp. This is a C++ implementation of Whisper that is optimized heavily. The instructions to install it are in the readme for the project, but you can also follow along with me. In another directory, we'll start by cloning the Whisper CPP project. Next, we can CD into that directory, and we will run a command to download the models. Now we can do a make. This takes a moment as it builds the optimized version for your computer. And now we can compare some timings. We will run our current whisper command against an audio file. And we see that it takes 1.85 seconds. Now we run the whisper.cpp command against our audio file. And it takes 276 milliseconds. Let's make the changes to our code to support whisper cpp. There's a few things we need to do to support Whisper CPP. So we'll go to our recognize function, and we're going to actually change a lot of these arguments. So we'll just paste in our example here. So this is going to be our Whisper command path. And that will be different for you, obviously. Then we will give it the file name and then file name. models is also going to need a path. So we'll do, actually let's call this whisper path. And it's going to be that set main, leave our trailing. All right, and then this will be whisper path main. Actually, I already don't like that trailing slash. All right, so then for models, what we'll do is this will be whisper path slash models. Okay, so that's good. Our prompt, we'll quote that. And then we don't need to quote, we don't need to double quote this because it will get shell escaped. We need to get our language here. And we don't need to redirect our standard error. Whisper CPP does a lot of debugging information on standard error, but since we're actually only capturing standard out below, we should be good to go. Okay, so that should get all the arguments correct, and this should work. There's one more change we need to make, which is our recording format. Whisper CPP does not work with AIFF files. It only works with WAV files that are 16 kilohertz and 16-bit. 
So we're going to have to change our rec command. So we'll look for that. Here we go. We'll change this to be dash R 16,000 and then dash B of 16. Now there's one more thing we need to do, which is change this to be a wave file. From our filler detection directory, we will run our bun index.ts. Hello, and how are you? Would you like a pony? Let's uh, circle back to that tomorrow. <laughs> Lovely, so the feedback is a good bit faster. Um, what's not to like? You can find the full code down in the description, and I've even modified it so that you can pass in the arguments of where your air horn sound lives and where your local Whisper CPP install is. Like many models, Whisper can hallucinate, so you may need to add some code to eliminate false positives over time. This can especially be impacted by the prompt itself. I've handled the initial pass at that in the code. After using this for a while, I'm going to add some more things to the regex, like so and possibly great and perfect, since as standalone words, those seem to be filler for me. Finally, I would love if someone would make a productionized version of this that anyone without a technical background could install on their computer with just a couple clicks. I think we can all get better together. So until next time, let's uh, listen for those air horns. Later, friends.